Hey guys, I'm at the Taj Mahal and here we can see a mysterious passage on the floor that goes directly underground. Now, if we take a closer look, it is not only locked with meshed metal doors, but if you look inside the doors, it has been covered with wooden boards. This not only means that you're not allowed to enter this passage, but you're also not even allowed to see what's inside. Where is this underground passage going? This is located just outside the main structure of Taj Mahal. But if you walk inside the Taj Mahal, you can see yet another massive passage that goes underground. This is also locked, but there is a sign that says, don't stop here or take pictures of this closed passage. Why should a sealed passage not be photographed? Does Taj Mahal really have a secret basement underneath? Authorities reluctantly accept that Taj Mahal does have an underground area and they say that there is a chamber which contains the tombs of King Shah Jahan and his wife Mumtaj. But at ground level, we can also see two more tombs, which are also the tombs of the same king and queen. Why would any dead person need two tombs, one at ground level and the other in the underground? They say that the underground chamber and tombs are also made of white marble, just like the rest of Taj Mahal which is entirely made of white marble. But is the Taj Mahal made completely out of white marble? To understand the truth, let's go to a side where visitors never go. We have to go into the nearby river and then observe what's going on. You can see that it has a huge base which is not made of white marble, but it's made of red sandstone. In fact, all the structures surrounding the Taj Mahal are made of red sandstone. This is best visible from the riverside. Remember the underground passage which was sealed off in plain sight? This is also located on the riverside. The passage is clearly made of red sandstone. But look at the material on the floor. This is also red sandstone. On the riverside, there's something very interesting hiding in plain sight. Did you notice this strange rectangle on the basement? This is one of the entrances that directly leads into the underground zone of Taj Mahal. How do we know this? Because an American architect by the name of Marvin Mills took clear pictures of this in 1974 and it had wooden doors but was locked so he couldn't see what was inside. He took a small piece of wood from the door and sent it for radiocarbon dating and the result showed that the wood predates Taj Mahal by at least 250 years. Immediately after this information hit the newspapers, authorities removed the wooden door and sealed it off with bricks and plaster, which is why it appears in a different color now. Why is the government repeatedly sealing off all the entrances leading to the underground zone of Taj Mahal? Authorities have come up with a rather strange explanation. According to them, the basement contains mummified bodies of the king and queen. If these bodies are exposed to the atmosphere, they will get contaminated. They say this is why all the entrances to the basement have been sealed off to keep the basement airtight. This is really strange because the floor of the Taj Mahal is full of ventilation shafts which directly go underground. If you look through, they're so deep that it just becomes dark. If authorities are really preventing the exposure of the mummies, which are already inside 
sealed marble tombs, why did they leave these vents open? Why do they have to close only the bigger holes through which human beings can enter? It's easy to understand that authorities don't care about the air going in, but just don't want human beings to enter the underground zone. If the basement of Taj Mahal merely contains the tombs of the king and queen, why do we see multiple passages to access the same chamber? And why does the carbon dating evidence on the wooden door show that it was created centuries before Taj Mahal? Is it possible that the basement and the rest of the structures around the Taj Mahal were built centuries before King Shah Jahan? To understand this, we have to read the book called Padshah Nama, written by the court historians of King Shah Jahan. This book explains the king's decision to build Taj Mahal in memory of the queen, but the same book actually proves that the rest of the structures around it were already in place. It explicitly mentions that King Shah Jahan did not construct the Taj Mahal on a vacant land, but instead bought the ancestral palace or mansion from another king called Jay Singh and then constructed the white marble structure in that place. This is very intriguing because if King Shah Jahan wanted to build the Taj Mahal, he could have built it anywhere in the same area. The entire area is still vacant. But instead, he chose to buy an existing structure and built the Taj Mahal on it. Why did he do this? Because constructing the Taj Mahal, the white marble structure itself, is a monumental project. In fact, King Shah Jahan almost became bankrupt because of it. If he chose to build the Taj Mahal on a vacant land, especially near the river, the expenses and efforts would double because he would have to create a massive foundation. The aerial view actually confirms that the basement and the rest of the structures were built a long time before the Taj Mahal. All the ancient structures were built completely out of red sandstone and bricks and resembled a fort. These were merely modified by King Shah Jahan by adding white marble domes on top. This is a very clever architectural modification because we cannot understand this from the ground view at all. Now, let's go back to the underground zone of Taj Mahal. It is clear that this zone predates Taj Mahal, but what's inside? Is it possible that the basement actually holds an ancient secret which the authorities do not want us to find out. Did you notice the coins strewn on top of the sealed passage? These are religious offerings by locals who believe that the underground structure is a temple of ancient gods. Locals refer to this temple as the Badalgar temple and claim that it stretches underground for many, many miles. So, I searched Google Maps for Badalgar, and the closest Badalgar is about 270 miles away. Can an ancient temple stretch underground for 270 miles? This seems kind of impossible, so I began hunting the nearby areas, and then I find something very interesting at this magnificent fort called the Agra Fort. This is just two miles away from Taj Mahal. The original name of Agra Fort was Badalgar. This is confirmed by historians and archaeologists. But again, we can see the same pattern. Historians clearly state that this structure was merely modified by King Akbar, who's the grandfather of King Shah Jahan. You can see that while the main structures are made of red sandstone, the domes are all made of different material. This is a breathtaking fort, but there is only one thing I'm looking for. An underground passage, or at least a small tunnel. 
And not surprisingly, there is a huge rectangular passage that goes straight underground and has meshed doors. But again, you can see that it is locked. I'm told by the tour guide that this is in fact an old passage that does go underground and is not used anymore, but it's been locked by authorities to prevent anyone from falling in and having accidents. Now, the problem is, it is locked from the inside of the passage. This is why you don't see a keyhole on this side of the lock. This means that at least one person is inside this passage as we speak. There should be no doubt about this. Who is using these underground facilities and why? And again, why do we see similar ventilation shafts going vertically down all over the Agra fort as well? And here, in plain sight, we can see stairs that go down. As usual, this is also locked, but at least we can see what's inside. This is not just a small tunnel, but you can see a huge volume. And there's something very interesting here. A dome-shaped arch, very typical of Mughal architecture. The first look into this forbidden zone shows that these constructions may not be ancient. They were, in fact, built by King Akbar or by his descendants. And then I managed to peep through a hole. Here, we can see some solid evidence that the underground structures belong to ancient times. The eight-faceted pillar with a square base which is found in almost all ancient Indian temples. In fact, there is a name for this in ancient Indian texts. It is called Ashtakona Skamba. You can see these multifaceted pillars in almost any ancient temple in India. Even the musical pillars of Hampi are multifaceted. Note that the pillar is also made of red sandstone, the same material which makes up Taj Mahal's basement. And these are newer brick walls built centuries later, modifying the ancient underground structure. And look at this area. A similar octagonal pillar has been removed because it was interfering with the newer brick construction. It is evident that King Akbar or Shah Jahan constructed these newer walls, which is why they look fresh but the pillar looks much older. This proves that there is an ancient underground structure that is being hidden from us, on top of which both this fort and the Taj Mahal are built. Remember, I said the distance between the Taj Mahal and Agra fort is about two miles. This is how the Taj Mahal looks from the Agra fort. This means a vast underground city stretches between them, much like the underground city of Elora Caves. So what do you think? Why do we have a sealed basement inside the Taj Mahal? What is behind this entryway that goes underground? Why are locals worshipping this passage? What about the radiocarbon dating of the wooden door? Why did authorities immediately cover it with bricks? How do we explain these ventilation shafts? Why is this door locked on the inside at the Agra Fort, which is miles away from Taj Mahal? What about the ancient pillar found inside? But more importantly, why are all these places locked? In my mind, there's no doubt that there is a secret underground facility of some sort, an ancient mystery kept hidden from us. What about you? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all the updates. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.